just continuing with the hair here, not very carefully putting in the underpainting, and paying very little attention to detail. So we're just continuing on here, adding in the darkest shapes of the hair. Very straightforward, using that same sepia color. So it's very dark. When you spray it at 100% intense, it's pretty much black. But I'm just getting the shape, tone, and dimensions all correct. I'm not too worried about detail at this stage. And after adding all the darkest parts of the hair, I'm going to do a little bit of childish colouring in with the red, giving a good base to the hair. Normally I would have done this base red first, but uh, you and me, we're doing things a little bit differently here. After adding all the texture into the hair over that darker layer, it's time to pretty much just colour in the hair with the red colour that we've mixed up previously. I'm just laying this over the top. There's no need to create much dimension because it's pretty much just a flat color. And you can really start to see some of those darker areas come through this transparent red. But if you can't, why don't we build them up a little bit more by adding a bit more sepia. Or dark brown, as some of us may know it. As some mothers may know it, or some others. Oh yeah, I'm cutting out the eye. Um, I've put some frisket down and I'm cutting around it with an X-Acto knife because I don't want to get any overspray from the skin onto the white of the eye. Because there's none there in the reference, okay? By masking it up, this means that I can be a little bit more lazy with how I apply these skin tones. I don't have to be too worried about holding my thumb you know, against the eye so that no overspray goes there. I can just spray all over it. Doesn't matter anymore, does it? Now I'm just applying the first base skin tone. In this area that I've applied the paint is where I can see that the actual colour is in the reference. So where I've left it white, I've left it white because I'm going to be putting the darker skin tone colour on the top of that. So just putting the colour where you need it. It starts to look a little bit strange but just have faith in your artwork and yourself and you'll see it come together towards the end. sloppy on putting this down. <laughs> There's a darker colour to go on top, so I'm only concerned about getting enough paint in the right places. At the very top of the image, on the right, I've put a little bit of frisket to shield the hair from overspray. However, it's a soft edge at the top there that joins the hair and the forehead together. So I want to remove that frisket film and I'm going to do that edge freehand because otherwise I'm going to get a hard edge. And we don't want that. Doing it this way, however, you're going to have to be careful not to get any of that base skin tone overspraying onto the red of the hair because that part of the artwork is done. But if you practice care and caution, there's no reason it won't work out for the best. There's just a little bit of this skin tone on the side of the shoulder. So I'm it's a hard edge there. I'm just going to mask around it with frisket and be careful with how I apply it. Making sure I don't get too much overspray of the skin tone in areas where I don't want it. Okay. Here I've put that shadow skin tone into the airbrush and I'm using it to create the dimension on our chest here. Ooh. 
I'm going to move back onto the face with this color in the airbrush and I'm going to use exactly the same color to create the dimension around the nose and anywhere else that I do see that color on the face. So this color is basically what I'd be referring to as our shadow tone. Just lay it on when you see it and you can start unmasking those areas. You've got very sharp lines but you'll see it come together towards the end. Now with this same colour in my airbrush I'm just moving on to some of the more crucial areas of the artwork like the nose. You just have to be super careful with how you apply this because if you apply it correctly that area is finished. So don't make a mistake, get it right the first time. It's a bit of a pointless exercise doing everything perfectly, as I've already mentioned, because the only colour layers that really need to be absolutely perfect in their own way are the darker colours. Concentrate instead on getting these areas of the artwork right, rather than spending hours and hours trying to get your underpainting to look fantastic at every stage, because it really doesn't need to. It only needs to come together at the very end. End of part four then, isn't it? In part five, we'll begin painting what I believe is the most crucial part of the whole artwork. The eye. The eye. Until then, just be patient, keep up the practice, keep spreading the love. <laughs>